Welcome to Epicenter, the podcast where we interview crypto founders, builders, and thought leaders. I'm Friederike Ernst, and I'm speaking with Jordi Baldina today, um, who is the founder of Hermes, among many other things. We will get into that in a bit. Before we talk to Jordi, um, I'd like to tell you about um, our sponsor this week. So DEXs are great, but they're vulnerable to problems like MEV, fail transactions, and high gas costs. CowSwap tackles these issues head on and offers a new kind of trading experience. Built by Gnosis, CowSwap is a MetaDEX aggregator. That, that's right, it's a DEX aggregator aggregator. It fights MEV by matching overlapping orders directly. If no coincidences of once is found, uh, that's where the cow comes from, trades are settled on a variety of underlying on-chain AMMs, depending on which pool offers the best price. And best of all, no gas on failed transactions. Volumes have gone up significantly since its launch in June. So in June, CowSwap saw trading volumes of 28 million, um, and that's gone up to 321 million in August with over 12.5 thousand traders. There's also a formal proposal now on the Gnosis uh, DAO forum regarding a token for Gnosis protocol um, and a revamped user interface with a new wallet activity history panel better um, USD price estimations and warnings about trade actions has also gone live. So start trading on cowswap.exchange or learn more in the cowswap discord. So Jodi, it's um, super lovely to have you on. I mean, you've been in the ecosystem really long time. I think the first time I became aware of your existence was in the context of the DAO hack. <laughs> so if, if memory serves correctly, you were part of the collective um, that drain the DAO, right? Um, so, so, yeah. so tell us how how this came about. Well, this is a little. This was a little bit my baptism in 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 blockchain, at least doing real things. And it happened that you know I I went absolutely deep in Ethereum. For me, it was like a drug. Just you know studying all day long and and uh, just understanding the, the the goodness of decentralization and the decentralization protocols and all that. I, I just arrived randomly to the DAO project. The DAO, you know, at that time was like the trending project at that time and was very cool and people was very excited about the DAO. And for me, was I learned Solidity uh, 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 from the DAO. I, I, then I just created some liquid democracy smart contracts for the DAO and I was really excited. For me, it was just like, I already discovered that this was like a new world, a new way of understanding the the, the world in a more decentralized uh, uh, manner. And I became like part of uh, of the DAO, uh, you know, just like another, another community member there and just uh, very excited, like everybody in there and learning a lot from many people from technical and, and i would say from, from the community people it was for me was a very incredible uh project uh, but then the, the the hack happens and at that time i knew a lot about the about the smart contract of the DAO because you know i, I used that smart contract to learn <laughs> well i just was i just realized how to how to what happened a little bit with Adao, I was able to reproduce that in a testnet. So I contact the Slockit people at that time. And uh, from there, I, they just, it just became a, what we call there a Robin Hood group, just trying to save the DAO at that point. It was like the last guy to arrive there. But uh, for me, it was, uh, but it changed my life, absolutely. You know, since there, I was just first helping there. And then I just uh, quit my last job in not crypto world. And since there, I've been 100% uh, in this space. And uh, well, just changed, changed absolutely my life. My life is, uh, has two, two, two sides, one before the DAO and the other is after the, before the DAO and after the DAO. It's just uh, how I divide my life in some way. And, and, and yeah, I'm, been, I'm there since that's the last five years and I'm very excited and, and I'm very excited and so proud to be here. Yeah, super interesting. What uh, uh, what a moment to enter the ecosystem, right? I mean, um, it it made the mainstream media and everything. And basically, back then, it just there were so. F I mean, there weren't a lot of people around, right? 
Well, there were probably different people, maybe not that many. For me, there, for me, it was a lot of people at that point, even. But you know, of course, now we change it. Uh, it changed change it a lot, and many, many new people entering the space. But you know, just uh, I remember at the beginning, you know, in these DAO hacks, uh, uh, you now just. I start because I, I I didn't knew anybody. I was just in my home in my laptop, just uh, talking with chance. And I remember the first time that I uh, meet physically with other uh, with other hackers, just with the DAO, and, and, and it was very 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 exciting. It was very exciting exciting moment. Uh, <laughs> I cannot forget. And 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 yes, and and it's interesting, yeah, because it's uh, what. Uh, something that's very technical and you will start getting in because the technical curiosity but then you discover the community you discover that these real people real uh, uh, very smart people and very uh, committed people uh, and people that really believe in what's doing and when you discover this world is you just get engaged you just get get here and it's super exciting <laughs> you then went on to found um, Giveth, right? With Griff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so with Griff, with Griff was also was helping to recover all that. I actually was the guy that was just talking with everybody. I was just behind the scenes, just trying to uh, help uh, there. And with him, we get we got very friends uh, there, and then we started the project. The Giveth project. Actually, I, uh, well, we started together with Griff, but I would say that's more the Griff project that that that, that mine's. It's mine too because we started together. But uh, it's Giveth is the dream of uh, the Griff dreams. And uh, well, I, I don't. I, I'm sure you know Griff, but you know Griff is very idealistic and and, and he loves. Uh, he, he he believes he has a, a vision of. Uh, a kind of a world and Gibeth is like a, a, a piece, a very important piece to build this decentralized, uh, this decentralized world. And, and it was, and I would say it is, because Griffith is still trying to build in that. He, he didn't give up and he's also, well, he's uh, working there and I'm sure he, he, will, he will get it, what he's uh, achieving. It's very interesting. <laughs> Just to give some background, so uh, Giveth is is a donations platform, right? So uh, yeah, it's a donation platform, but it's more uh, community. I would say it's a very uh, a way of um, a way of uh, uh, solving the community uh, fundings for the communities. You know how the community is organized and how the community can be uh, funded and how the a, a community can start doing things, good things, with less uh, friction that the current system has and this is about uh give it organizing communities uh, funding communities and he's also for example just working in this his DAO stack project and it's all about this it's just about uh ways of uh funding uh ways of funding uh people that just want to do good things and, and, and this is what's give it about Cool. Yeah, no, it's 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 definitely a super interesting project to to check it out. Um so let's talk about what you've been up to since. Well, uh I can I can say that since there the from from that time, well I was doing at the beginning I was doing a lot of audits and you know all the ICO boom at that point and was still learning and continue learning. I didn't stop learning since there. It's just a new world and you know you have to study a lot here just to understand what's going on. Uh, but there was at that point there was a technology that I already realized that was very exciting. It's all this zero knowledge uh, technology. So since there I was at the beginning just studying, studying a lot of this technology. Then I was building some tools for this technology. We created the, pro the project IDEN3. IDEN3 is a project for uh, self sovereign identity. We're still working on that project. It's a protocol for self sovereign identity. That's uh, where zero knowledge is the key piece for, you know, for privacy and for key recovery and for everything. And uh, with this technology, 
we just started the rollups because it's cool because the zero knowledge technology it's the same technology that can be used for privacy but can also be used for scalability for scaling it's strange but it's a technology that allows uh, these uh, two things so then we started the hermes project hermes project is a uh, 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 roll up uh, layer two zk roll up uh, for doing payments mainly was launched last march is actually working right now in mainnet and now i'm working in the zkvm that's mainly layer two zk roll up where you can uh, deploy smart contracts uh, on top of that and this is what i'm fully committed right now and what i'm working hard right now and what I'm very excited uh, to work on, and, and, and yes, we are doing a lot of progress, and, and yeah, I hope that uh, we can see it very soon. Cool, yeah. So let's talk about Hermes. So as you said, um, Hermes is a ZK rollup built on Ethereum. So obviously, Ethereum has a pre-existing EVM, which is not optimized for ZK technology. Um, so basically, starting from that, there are at least two options um, how to get the zero-knowledge part and the EVM part together. So either you make the zero-knowledge part solidity compatible or you build a full set of EVM opcodes and you have you guys have decided to go the second path, right? So from where I stand, this comes with very obvious advantages. So basically you inherit the full compatibility with the tooling and the ecosystem. Um, you keep the Ethereum security um, uh, model, but I assume it also comes with a lot of challenges, right? Yes, absolutely. It's uh, uh, you said before. It's uh, the current EVM in Ethereum is not. Pre it was not designed. Uh, I don't think nobody realizes that uh, this could be run in a zk friendly uh, uh, environment. Uh, so yes, it's not designed for that. We are doing a kind of interpreter. So what we are doing is okay. We are just uh, this is not compatible. We are, but we are trying to make it compatible. So that's a little bit what uh, we are working. This uh, theoretically this should make so it should should be a little bit uh, not optimal. But when you check at it. It's more optimal than what you may think uh, at the beginning. So if you think deeper, if you think deeper in all the problems you have, and if you're doing in the in the right way, you see that you can create a very you know this specific micro code. So you know a specific uh, you can uh, you have the freedom to design the ZK EVM that yeah, the, 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 that's the base EVM that you want. So you can design this EVM in a way that's very optimal for uh, interpreting the Ethereum EVM. So it's like, uh, let me just put an example, is uh, uh, I want to uh, imagine that you want to uh, do an interpreter of Python and okay and you want to do it in c uh but it's not it doesn't fit it's, it's not uh the right way but imagine but imagine that you don't even that the c is not even invented so you can invent the, your own language there uh that's uh it's a language that needs to run a single program that it's only be needs to that the only thing that needs to that the only thing that the program needs to do is uh to interpret python so you can write a very optimal uh, language and uh, uh, compiler for C to be very optimal to just compile a, a Python interpreter. That's a little bit the, the example, but it's uh, it's not that uh, so it's not that uh, unoptimal as it may look like. Of course it is, but it's not as much and it's doable. And of course this brings a lot of advantages. Uh, uh, from compatibility, you just you go just opcode to opcode. You you just compile the program in Solidity and you get the same output, and you just uh, run it there here instead of there. It's like a little bit, for example, currently the the optimistic rollups uh, like Arbitrum or or optimistic. Little bit the way they are doing. You know, they are not. Uh, Maybe they change something in the solidity, but it's more because not because they are changing the the EVM, it's because they are uh, 
it's not a layer it's not a layer one it's a layer two so there are maybe some opcodes that makes no sense in layer two uh, but it's more uh, technicality is that what it is so a developer ideally should not care if he's doing a smart contract for layer one and for a layer two so you're basically you're taking up code by up code and you're kind of transposing them into the corresponding zk up code so basically if i wanted to have like a, a five up code string a b c d e i would go zk a zk b zk c zk d zk e and i would get the same result is that kind of roughly correct yeah it's actually is you are run you you have a program a solidity program when you compile it, you get a set of uh, byte. Uh, you set a set of bytes that are opcodes mainly. So you just take those bytes, and instead of running here, you just run there. It's like uh, at the end is um, from the user perspective, is like having a side chain. It's not a side chain, but the same way that you are using uh, uh, Polygon or XDAI or any other side chain that you are just signing transactions and deploying smart contracts in the side chain. It should work the same way with a ZK VM. The only thing is not going to be a side chain. It's going to be a layer two. It's going to be a, a roll up. But from the user perspective, should not be uh, many differences. Okay, and in principle, can you transpose any opcode into a ZK opcode? Yes, theoretically, yes. There are some opcodes that are harder than uh, others, but uh, we have been analyzing, and I would say yes. There are some, you know, as I told you before, there are some exceptions uh, that are more. Uh, for example, uh, you know, if there is an opcode that's uh, uh, difficulty. You know, how much is difficulty is okay in layer two? You don't have difficulty or anything sure. related. So this opcode probably will exist, but maybe will return some uh, hard coded uh, information. Okay, or uh, base code. Who's the who's the miner? Okay, you don't have miners, but maybe you have a coordinator. So maybe. Uh, this opcode returns the coordinator instead of the miner. Okay, so there are some some tricky opcodes that are very related to the later one, but most of the opcodes uh, will be will be the same, and there should not be many problems to implement it. Here is another thing: is the cost. You know, uh, maybe there are some opcodes. So the the, the the gas cost in 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 the layer one is um, one, and then this, the the cost in the zk rollup, the, the the specific cost for running that in the rollup, may be a little bit different. So uh, uh, here maybe some adjustments that uh, would need to be done, but they idea is to keep exactly the same ga gas model that layer one. So. And the worst thing, maybe it's going to be some transaction that would not be able to to run in the in the ZK rollup. For example, if you are abusing uh, one of these opcodes that's very expensive in the ZK rollup, well, in the in the ZK rollup, maybe it's going to be a limit of, imagine for example, exponentiation. Exponentiation, maybe it's a hard uh, uh, opcode. So maybe you can only do like three exponentiations or four exponentiations, and if you are doing more these transactions. Would not would just be impossible to mine, so it would it would be an, an invalid transaction. That's the thing that may happen. But if it's executed, it will be executed the same way that uh, in layer one. Okay, so so basically, um, you you have like this uh, this library of uh, say 140 or 140 minus you know the couple that make no sense zk opcodes, and then I mean what we use on layer one um, a lot is these precompilers, right? I mean, there aren't as many. I think there's like 10 or something. But do you have equivalents for those as well? Yeah, theoretically, yes. Uh, but these are hard. And these are, I would say, these would be expensive. You know, an opcode, there are opcodes that are expensive. But precompile, precompiles is like another opcode. It's not really an opcode, but can be interesting in opcode. But they could be very, 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 very expensive. For example, uh, you have paintings. Uh, so theoretically, you should be able to run a, a so to execute a painting uh, inside a, a rollup. It's doable. So te technically, it's doable. Uh, but the cost, uh, it would be quite expensive in 
ZK EVM term. So maybe you can only do one painting or two paintings uh, in a single transaction uh, compared to that. But but theoretically, it's 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 possible. Okay, and as of this summer, we have this uh, ZK precompile, right? Can you kind of nest these with um, the AMS network and kind of get something like a recursive um, uh, zero knowledge um, system? Yeah, if you have paintings, if you have paintings, actually you can have a roll up, a zk roll up inside another yeah. zk roll up. Yeah, you have some sort of recursions if you have paintings. Yeah. Uh, as I told you here, we need to see what's the final cost of these okay. uh, paintings. You know, this is I tell you, this is going to be the last, uh, <laughs> the last subcode or the last, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, the last precompiled smart contract that we will implement it. But uh, it's repetitive. You know, at the end, uh, uh, at the end, uh, painting is to do a painting. You need the Miller loop. You need the final exponentiation. Both things are very uh, cycling, so it's very loops. So it's it's very do it's much doable uh, in the in the way that uh, so how we are building all these polynomial systems. So all all the way that we are building this proof is absolutely doable. But what may happen is that is maybe a transaction can ha handle only maybe one pairing or two pairings. Okay. Um. So, but but let's talk about what's on layer one in this, right? So basically, so when, when I, as a user, when I send a transaction, I don't send it on layer one, I send it to um, a coordinator, right? Mm -hmm. A coordinator or a set of coordinators. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, the, and the coordinator kind of, the, the coordinator takes um, all, um, basically the mempool of all, um, of all these transactions and kind of executes them. Um, all together and then sends a proof to the chain, right? And basically a new Merkle root. Is that correct? Yeah, ma mainly is that, yeah. So why is the gas limit so crucial? The gas limit of uh, of the coordinator? Um, the gas limit of, of the um, of the opcodes or precompiles. No, this is this is more for building the proof. So okay, you, it's just you, for the you, proof. You, you, yeah, it's for the, you. You need to build the proof, but not everything. You know, the proof is like at the end is a circuit, and and the circuit can have a limited number of operations. So if you exceed uh, uh, these operations, then you just will not be able to build the proof. That's the same to say that you you will not be able to uh, execute that transaction. Okay, so how 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 many transactions fit in one proof? We need to we need to do the final numbers. What I will give you is just like a first a first rough, but um, um, the way so we have like a, a a double system. So we have a growth sixteen or Blanc that's uh, validating a set of Starks. Mm -hmm. Okay, in each Stark uh, in each Stark. We don't have, this is just, uh, it's not the final numbers, but we expect to, at least in each start, to be able to process half a million gas. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we can have, I would say, easily about 1,000 Starks in a single proof. So this is maybe two orders of magnitude uh, of, uh, in, proof, in proof terms, two orders of magnitude of the current Ethereum. But again, this is, you know, very pre preliminary uh, theoretical calculus there. Okay. Um, so in uh, in your white paper and also on your on your homepage, you say that Hermes is very much focused on token transfers. So wh why do you say that? Because in principle, if you have all opcodes, you can run any an, any smart contract, no? Yeah, yeah, but it's like, uh, okay, we, we have it until now. Uh, so what we have is a payment, a payment ZK roll up. And this is what's running and this is in the mainnet. Okay, uh, what I'm when I'm talking now about the ZK uh, ZK VM, this is not is not created yet. This is what we are working technically right now, and it's going to be the next version of Hermes uh, some way. So if we are talking about payments, we are talking about uh, uh, what we have right now, and I can give you full detail of what we have right now. If we are talking about executing smart contracts, if we are talking about ZK VM, this is what we are building now, and. Uh, and this is why I'm telling you about the, the quantity of gas. 
in the current Hermes, the quantity of payments, we allow 2,000 uh, transfers uh, uh, per proof, okay? And, uh, and you can feed about 15, between 15 and 20 proof per block. If, so this is a, a, more or less a total of 2,000 transactions per, per second. If you were using full Ethereum just to run, uh, you, you could not do anything else in Ethereum with, that, with those numbers. But this gives you a scalability, this uh, two orders of magnitude scalability on the, on the rollup. And the main limitation is more in the, well, it's in the proof, but it's also in the data availability. So here are the limits that are, well, it's just, it can be, it, it, you, can, you, can do it, you can do it better. There is margin to, to, to improve uh, these things. So this is just like the first version of a ZK rollup is, is with these numbers. Okay, and so basically, um, as a CK mechanism, you use either Grass 16 or Plonk, and as far as I know, Grass 16 actually requires a trusted setup, right? Yes. Um, so you'll do a ceremony at some point? We did the ceremony uh, for the Hermes, mm -hmm. and it's a specific uh, ceremony for the circuit. If we upgrade the circuits, then we have to run like another trust sure. that's set up, I hope. And this is, this is, I would say the growth 16 is uh, perfect. In, uh, uh, it's like has all the advantages and is the best proving system and it's everything is perfect except for this trust setup. So if you need a trust, if you, if you cannot handle a trust setup, then you need to go to uh, other, to other, uh, to other uh, proof systems. Plonk also requires a trust setup, but it's a universal trust setup. It's not a specific setup for 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 Hermes. And uh, personally, I think that uh, it should be enough. You know, growth sixteen, I can ac I can accept that you know it's not perfect because at the end you need you need to end up trusting a set of people that run the that, that run the specific trust setup. But uh, in Plong, this trust is set up. This is a universal trust is set up. It's much bigger with much more people. It was created beforehand. It was created for with different companies, uh, with different people around. So I think it's it's doable. And uh, you know, who knows? Uh, in the future, maybe there will be other proof systems that will not require trust set up here. For example, the Zcash people is working Halo that does not require trusted setup, and there are other Starks that does not require. But the proof site, the proof sites is quite big. Uh, but there, no, there are other. Um, there is a lot of research in this field, and maybe it's going to be some proof system that it requires. But for for the from a pragmatic way, I think that Growth sixteen or Plonk is is good enough. Cool. Um, so let's talk about how this looks for me as a user, right? So basically, um, I sent my transaction to the coordinator. So what, what's the job of the coordinator? Well, the coordinator is just, uh, it's a little bit like a miner, if you want. So it has some similarities with there. And the idea is just collect uh, as many transactions as it can and build a, a batch. You mentioned it means building a proof and sending that to the layer one. That's what a coordinator, a coordinator does in Hermes. And um, how do I become a coordinator? Uh, let me just, okay, I, I explain you in Hermes, maybe in CKVM we, we, we change this a little bit, but the idea of Hermes is that you just uh, buy or you just bid for a slot. Uh, the, the the winning of the, the who wins the bidding just gets 10 minutes and in that 10 minutes you just can uh, build as many batches as you want so if you have a lot of transactions and if you are fast and if you have a good equipment equipment you will be able to extract all the value of those transactions and get all the fees of those transactions and so by extracting the value, you mean the fees that people pay and not, exactly. I mean, in principle, you could also extract um, MEV or maybe coordinate extractable value, right? Yes. In the case of, oh, in the case of uh, 
It's not very much the case. Yeah. The, the, the thing that the mining extract, extraction value, this is all. This is more for when you have smart contracts, you have DEXs, and you have uh, 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 other other kinds of things. But in the CKBM, this will become, and so in the CKBM, we probably will will work. Uh, will do it a little bit different. Well, what are your ideas um, as to how to do it? Well, the idea is more about using more sequencer. So how how would that work? So basically, there would be um, there would be a deterministic way of um, of yeah. seeing um, which transactions go in which order. Yeah, exactly. A little bit, a little bit, uh, a little bit will be that, but that's the idea. Okay. Um. So the coordinator currently has to um to pay for the privilege of kind of mining the block or coordinating the block. What happens to tokens that the coordinator has to pay for um, uh, for this privilege? Yeah, well, this is uh, part of it is burn and needs to be burned for the protocol. Mm -hmm. And part of it is uh, donated and part of it is uh, uh, rec recycled to the to the to the users of the to see to the network itself. Uh, well, currently, is thirty percent is burned, forty percent is donated, and thirty percent is recycled. Okay, and um, if the coordinator um, behaves maliciously, um, can they be slashed? Uh, they can not. So, uh, what first is what means uh, uh, behaves maliciously because uh, coordinator cannot do very much. So it just can just forge or not forge, and if it forge, it can forge the transactions that they have. So, first thing is what means maliciously. Okay, so this is a little bit like saying what happened if a miner uh, behaves uh, maliciously. Well. Mm, Sure. Mm, they cannot insert their transaction, an invalid transaction, or still uh, funds. Okay. Things that may happen here is, for example, that um, he's censoring, may, for example, some sort of transactions. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in the case in of the roll up, we have a, we call it a forced transaction, and mainly it's a layer one transaction that's forced to be uh, uh, mined by the, well, uh, forged by, uh, by the coordinator. So, coordinator has the obligation to execute those transactions. So uh, your funds cannot be locked there. You know, if even if, so if 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 you are doing if you have the funds there and the coordinator don't want to uh, execute your transaction, you 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 can always do a layer one transaction probably to exit and you and the coordinator will either forge that transactions or, or will not forge anything. Okay. So, but what happens if the coordinator submits a um, faulty proof? No, it's it's just, uh, it's like doing nothing. You know, it's, it's, it's that's the, that's the difference between optimistic and CK. In CK, you just uh, send the proof and this proof is validated by the smart contract. And if this proof is invalid, then uh, the smart contracts, you know, just the transaction fails, transaction throws. So it's like the, the state doesn't change. Okay. So it's impossible to forge an invalid transaction in a security rollup. And even better, when it's forged, so once the transaction is forged, it cannot be rolled back. You know, it's it's final, it's 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 there. And, and this is the big difference between ZK rollup and optimistic rollup. In optimistic rollup, you need to, you know, a coordinator can can forge, so can send an invalid uh, transaction there, and then there is this um, mechanism. And this doesn't exist in ZK rollup. In ZK rollup, you just send a transaction, you send this proof, this cryptographic proof, which is hard and expensive to compute, but the cool thing is that once you submit there, you the, the smart contract verifies and you are you are okay. You are you are that that's it. Okay, so basically the worst thing that the coordinator can do is they can um they can censor someone. So basically the way that you currently combat that is by um having users submit things via call data, right? Um or how does it currently work? Well, the, uh, the yeah, coordinator can censor because at the end it can choose which transaction. Currently in the Hermes, it can choose which transactions they include and which transactions they do not include. Uh, but 
you know, the user has always the option to uh, uh, to create a layer one transaction, forcing the coordinator to uh, execute that transaction. So it's so it cannot be censored. Okay, maybe you'll have to pay the gas of the layer one yeah. uh, to run the to, to run the, your transaction, but uh, the you cannot. So the coordinator cannot uh, censor you. Well, it can. The only thing that can do is don't, don't forge anything, just to stop the network in some way. But in this case, there is a time mode that anybody at this stage, anybody can forge, can create a, a block, so can forge. So if everybody, if everything is a stop, you can always build. Maybe it will take uh, one day to compute the proof uh, in the normal laptop, but in in one day uh, the transaction. So the next you, you you have you have for sure that in the next batch that's forged either by you or either by somebody else, your transaction is going to be executed. So it at the end it's impossible to be censored in the in the worst uh, in, in you know in the worst scenario you can, you, can, you cannot be censored. Cool. Um, so a couple of months ago, we had Alex from MetaLabs on. So at a very high level, um, how how would you characterize the difference between um, the the zk rollup um, that MetaLabs is working on and the zk rollup that you guys are working on? Well, first of all, let me just say that uh, MetaLabs is an incredible project, and they are doing a very good job in the in this space. I'm not so in the in the case of the zk uh, in the zk EVM part. I'm not 100 sure of what they are doing because they have not published too much yet. Okay, so I cannot talk very much what they are doing. They are following more an approach of uh, uh, you know just compiling. Solidity to a more zk specific uh, set of opcodes, okay, which is uh, it's a good path, you know, it's an interesting path, and it's just uh, here we just choose a different path. We just choose a path uh, to try to uh, probably it's a little bit harder in, in in things, but it's simple in another, okay. So it's just uh, it's a different path, and and uh, we will see, you know, just. Uh, 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 we think we believe that our our path is uh, is is the right one, but but we may be wrong, you know. <laughs> Just uh, we see. And but the, the interesting thing is that even if uh, at some point we just see that this is the wrong path, you know, just we we may happen, we can always go to the other path. You know, just uh, if so, it's like uh, because we're implementing uh, at the end, we're implementing the same. We're executing uh, programs in there. So if if at the end, it's very easy to say, okay, just let's forget forget about compatibility. Just, let's just use let's simplify the EVM. Just just run this, 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 and this, and let's run. It. We can always do that, and, and and this is always an option. But we 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 really believe that we can be very very compatible to the current EVM. Mm -hmm. So, so far we've talked about scalability a lot. So basically the other thing that, that zero knowledge in principle can do is it can afford you privacy, right? So, um, I mean, even, even despite the fact that currently everything is kind of centered around, um, advancing scaling, could this also to trans, it, could this also translate to, um, better privacy down the road? Yes and no. As I told you before, the zero knowledge can be used for privacy and for and for scalability. Okay, but they cannot be used at the same time for both. Okay, so if you want to have privacy and scaling, you need to some sort of recursion. So you need, for example, so you do like you have like a, a kind of a tornado cache or a kind of a Z cache, some 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 layer of uh, uh, privacy. Uh, that's running inside uh, maybe a zk uh, zk rollup. Okay, but both things at the same time. You know, I know that for example, Arctic people is working in that direction. You may ask them how they are doing and so on. They are, you know, very great people and they are doing very interesting people. But we our focus is at this point is more for on the scalability, just having an Ethereum 
uh, but running in a ZK, so scale scale Ethereum. And once there, of course, if you scale Ethereum and Ethereum handles privacy, maybe you can run it inside the, the scalability. But we are trying to uh, split the split the the problems and trying to solve one specific problem. Sure, sure. And I mean, it's it, it's a hard enough problem to solve. Um. So. Um, a couple of weeks ago, the news broke that um, Hermes merged with Polygon, the scaling solution. Um, so basically, um, if if you look at um, Hermes and Polygon, um, they are um, architecturally they're built in different ways, right? So basically, um, Hermes Hermes very much inherits the security guarantees from Ethereum, whereas this currently is not true for Polygon in a way. It's it's a standalone layer one chain with a periodic uh, Ethereum commit. Um, so I haven't really found a lot about how the joint model will look. Um, can you talk about this? Between Hermes and Polygon, there, of course, there are things that are very complementary, mm -hmm. and that's why I think it's a good merge. But there are we both share um, the same vision here. And the vision is mainly that we are not doing here these projects. Uh, we are not here just to do some, some, some gadgets just to play. Uh, we want to bring this, uh, technology to real people. We want to scale. We want to go mainstream. Uh, we, we want to grow. And this is the, this is the the vision of uh, Polygon, and this is the vision to to Hermes. Okay, and said that uh, we are we have been working a lot in this uh, zk rollups, you know, in this technology. Uh, Polygon Polygon people, of course, accept that this is the right way to go. Uh, this is the so they they believe and and in the wild they are doing things just to to try to get customers just to get people using that and they are uh, of course maybe it's not the perfect solution the side chain but uh, I would say an enough solution for many projects and and probably the best solution that you can have it right now if you want to build uh, smart contracts and you don't want to pay maybe a, a huge amount of fees and, and so on. So uh, at the end, the important is understand what we are doing, what where we are, what are the current technologies that are available, working together I think we can go very far just to bring this technology to mainstream, and this is that that this is why I think is a good merge. Uh, uh, there is a very good fit in the even in the management teams. There is a very good uh, uh, fitting there, and uh, yeah, it's uh, for for me it's very exciting to be uh, at this moment just part of this polygon mission in there. So, which is the same that the one we had. So it's 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 very exciting. We'll see. You know, this is at the end. Is we'll see in the next uh, month and years and see how the things evolve. But I think it's a very good. I think it's a very good thing that we can work together. Cool. So, I mean, the pol the Polygon network obviously is is used quite heavily currently. I see that there are different parts here that kind of where maybe it's not clear how they will get. How, how they will work together in in the end but do you have an idea of architecturally how it will work so basically will you will polygon resort to the Hermes zk roll-up model um or is this not clear yet uh, i would say it's not clear yet um but you know uh, at the end is it's what i told you before it's just bring this uh technology mainstream and being this technology, when I'm saying bring this technology, I mean please bring this technology with all the values that this technology adds. Mm -hmm. And if you have to do some concession at some point, it's important that uh, we understand with which concession we are doing uh, in 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 each side. And 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 this is um, yeah, and this is uh, so uh, polygon will use the technology that's available at each point to 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 have the most adoption uh, 
they can and to try to keep the values of decentralization as much as they can. And this is, uh, so if it's if this is the Hermes technology, that's great. But if it's another somebody else technology because it's better, mm, it's going to be great too. So it's it's uh, the idea is to to bring this to to what it's it's important that there are that we have a, a lot of uh, um, companies that are developing on top of on top of Ethereum that are thinking about blockchain that is thinking about decentralization and. Uh, I remember that uh, maybe in the in the during the ACOs in the in the 2017 2018 probably 2017 there was a lot if you if you if you check uh, uh, Ethereum you saw a lot of different applications a lot of different people just building uh, things on top of Ethereum and I remember that a lot of those. Uh, initiative a lot of those uh, projects they just stopped their business some way because they couldn't afford uh, just the, the Ethereum didn't scale and so they couldn't afford the, the they couldn't afford the paying the gases and make no sense just to use some uh, insurance application just paying for it use every time you just hire an insurance just paying fifty dollars just or whatever so it makes no sense but they are very interesting applications and uh, at the end it's just a matter of scaling okay so it's important that these uh, companies continue working continue evolving continue doing things uh, on top of ethereum because when ethereum scales whichever way they are ready they are ready running there so it's in some way it's just uh, Earning time in the earning time in the in the future. So that's why it's so important uh, those uh, side chains, even if the properties are not as good as not the ideal, as not the ones that uh, we want to uh, we want to have. But they are doing their job. They are doing their 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 mission. Okay. Even it's like it's not a testnet, but it's a testnet is not enough sometimes. You know, this is some middle thing. You know, just and and this is. I think it's these side chains, you know, it's important for that. But you need to understand, and this is probably the, the key, most important thing. You need to understand what are the limitations of these uh, uh, side chains. Yeah, I, I completely understand. Um, so, so let's talk about the roadmap and how this um, fits in with Ethereum two. So, basically, um, the current vision for the for um, sharding is data availability shards, which sounds wonderful if 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 you're in charge of a zk rollup. So, um, tell us about um, when you plan to. I mean, I know that these these estimates are always fraud, and we've all been there. But um, so, w when do you plan to uh, go live with um, the zk EVM and how? How will that change um, once data availability shards um, become available? Let's say though for in our side uh, the ZK the ZKBM for us is more or less it should be more or less a one year project. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe it's maybe we can for example we are right now we are accelerating and we are running a lot but you know there are some maybe there are some stages that we delay so that's it's it's difficult to. It's difficult to know exactly when, but it's not. It should be around one, a year, okay? Mm -hmm. So that this should be production ready uh, some way, okay? Um, again, things may happen. It's something that's new. A lot of challenges are happen, and uh, uh, it's just like not fully commit. It just give you what's in my mind, uh, what should be, okay? How this fits with Ethereum 2.0, uh, I don't know. You know, uh, uh, we need to see. For us, the the the, the sharding is uh, an important thing right now. I think they are working a lot with the merge. Yeah. With uh, uh, so and probably sharding is going to come. It's going to come next. It's a path. You know, we will we will see, and it's a stage to stage. Uh, Right now, the, the cool thing of Ethereum 2.0 is, um, you know, I remember in the 19th, uh, in, in 2019, 2018, that was not clear. And there was, uh, there were, every time that we talk about Ethereum 2.0 was not 
it was like the research was not done and, and, and there were a lot of things and even changing one from one side to the other, which is normal because when you are researching, you know, thing changes and you go deeper in one topic and then you, 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 you see that you can do it much better. So you just go back and, and it's, it's normal. But from outside, it's like it was, uh, we will never had, <laughs> when you see it from outside, we will never have a three to the zero. This is never, will never happen. This is the, the feeling that uh, a lot of time we had. At this point, I think that nobody doubts that Ethereum 2.0 is going to happen. We, maybe we are talking is this we will take one year, two years or three years, but, but uh, Ethereum 2.0 is, 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 is happening and it's, uh, it's the way to go. Uh, we replaced the concept of this, it was, we call it before execution environments. No, we call it ZK rollups or sort of rollups at least if you want. Uh, it's not exactly the same, but it's almost the same. And, and this evolution, you know, just uh, this evolution of Ethereum with uh, all this zero knowledge technology that has been evolving, all the all the work of the sharding, on the the beacon net, on the consensus mechanism, all this, you know, uh, all this is coming together. And uh, uh, I think I think that. At this point, nobody doubts that blockchain, blockchains, and concretely Ethereum uh, is gonna be a global scaling uh, blockchain uh, very soon. If you, I don't, if you, if you talk to, if if you were, if you talk to me, maybe in 2018, uh, when the scaling solutions were you know, state channels or even these uh, side chains uh, and things. Uh, I was very skeptical and, and, and <laughs> for me it was not clear. But at this point, uh, I think the path is quite clear. You no, know, this is going to scale for sure. And, and it's just a matter of, uh, uh, this point is a matter of engineering. It's a matter of just putting the pieces together uh building and of course maybe improving some protocols and things but it's it's there it's it's, it's more um fine-tuning and and, and 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 building but this is going to happen cool so maybe um to conclude let me let me zoom right out so you've always been a person um to think a lot about what's right and what the right thing to do is, right? I mean, basically with the Robin Hood group and the, the white hat hackers and giveth and so on. Um, so, I mean, currently you're working on technology that makes the blockchain more performant, um, but on a societal scale, what do you hope will come out of this? So basically, if you, if you look at um, blockchain, um, say in five to 10 years, um, in what metric will humanity be better off because of blockchain? Look, at the end, I hope that the people get proud of the communities they belong to. They, they, so here is uh, empowering people. That means that uh, you are part of a society. You know, you were born, you, you, you will die and, and, and you don't exactly, you don't really know what you are doing here in this world, but you know that you are surrounded of other humans that are more or less the same than you. And you are trying to do the best thing for all of us. So at the end, you are just building communities and you are just trying to, in some way, work together to have more, to be more happy. And this is what's life about. And the, the cool thing of a blockchain is that this should allow you to uh, be part of the community, of the community that you want to be in the community should be half opt-in and opt -out options to the community. You should have a uh you should be part that means that you should work for the community you should uh so this is why governance for example is something that's so important but you know it's just governance but also organizing or distributing if you want distributing the the, the scarcity resources some way this is why the money is about and why the tokens are about and uh, so on. This is what can uh, blockchains uh, uh, and this technology can help. If you see 
if you see the the world right now, just think in how many states, uh, how many conflicts are right now in the world because a lack of uh, a lack of uh, trust in the central authority. In all these places, you know, places where there are wars right now, wars right now uh, or countries that you know, I, let me put an example here. It's just Venezuela. Venezuela is uh, it's a democratic country and the people just wants to be how they want to build or it's just a dictatorship and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and who knows, you know, there is, a, there is a central party that's organizing some um, elections. Nobody knows if this is uh, corrupt or not. And... <laughs> It, it, it's, it's a lack of trust. Imagine that you can just organize a voting system where it's it can it's just real and you understand how it works. This will solve a lot a lot of things uh, right now in that conflict. And this is just an example. You know there are many conflicts and many things in the humanity that can be solved just by not having to trust uh, central uh, central authority. And, and and this is this is what's the blockchain. So this is what the, what the blockchain will add to the society. Of course, uh, blockchain is a technology. It's not enough uh, for this transformation of the society to happen. You know that it requires some social uh, transformation too. Okay, but definitely uh, uh, the blockchain can be the, the technology that triggers this change in the society, for sure. Cool. Thank you, Jordi. So where can people go to find out more about Hermes? That's Hermes.io. I think you can find all the information there. Right now it's polygon slash Hermes.io. But yeah, any both both domains work, so just go there. We have our Reddit group, we have Telegram group, of course, Twitter also there. I think it's just Hermes with Z, you know, just uh, Hermes ended with Z, just it's easy to find us. Cool. Um, it's been a real pleasure to have you on. I've wanted to do this ever since you gave that really astonishing talk at ECC, which we'll also link to in the show notes. So um, if you're interested in the maths behind this, um, go check out that talk as well. It was fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on. Okay. Thank you very much to you.